over, over fear. Listen, it's been, it's been well established that fear is something that our, our adversary, the devil, uses against the people of God. Uh, the devil has a peculiar way of weaponizing fear. But here in, in this text, if we can just get right to it, we really, we find uh, the strategy for fighting fear through faith uh, that is fueled and fortified by God himself. Uh, here God gives uh, a word and, and shares a gift for those who struggle with fear. And it's found here in the opening words of the Apostle Paul to his young son in the gospel, the young evangelist, Timothy. Now listen, in the interest of time, uh, without going into all of the nuances of this, uh, this text, you remember that young Timothy was was, was, was positioned in Ephesus to minister in a hostile environment that was uh, less than holy, amen. Uh, and it was, it was in the face of those challenges, a hostile environment and a less than, than holy church, it was in the face of those, those challenges that Timothy found himself in a fight with fear and a duel with self-doubt. And it was, it was in, in response to that and in the recognition of that that Paul challenged Timothy to remember his religious heritage and stir up the flame or the gift of God that had been deposited in him. And then to, to, to jog Timothy's temporary amnesia, uh, Paul reminds Timothy in verse number seven that God had not given him and by extension us a spirit of timidity or a spirit of fear. Now listen, we understand that in all, of, in all likelihood, this, uh, this was a reminder from Paul to Timothy that he must preach the word of God flat-footed. He, he must preach the word of God with boldness and, and conviction, but it, at its core, uh, this was also a challenge to Timothy, and it is even a challenge to us today to not operate in a cowardly way uh, in this Christian walk and in the assignment that God has given us. Listen, let me, let me pause right there before I run too fast to help everybody in here understand that, that whether, we, whether we have a COVID-19 pandemic or not, God has an assignment for each and every one of us. Am I, am I in the church this morning? But regardless of the pandemic or the, the health scare, regardless of your financial status or your financial outlook, God still has a plan, a purpose, and an assignment for everyone. And we must avoid the temptation to give in to fear and block the progress and the purpose that God has for each and every one of us. Paul says, Paul says, don't operate in a state of fear that opens the door for the devil to enter in, to, to operate freely, to sow seeds of, of doubt and begin to wreak havoc in your life and in your faith and in your purpose. That, Paul's saying, he's suggesting here that if you possess that spirit, that is a spirit that does not come from God because God has not given a spirit of fear, a spirit of timidity. He says that he's given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Paul says don't operate in a state of, of, of panic, in a state uh, of fear. Don't give room and don't give a foothold for the devil to come in and wreak havoc in your faith and, and in your purpose. And, and therein lies, really lies the problem. I know, I know, I know it sounds elementary, let me slow down. I, I, I know it, it sounds elementary, but if you will uh, allow me to be elementary for just a moment, I'd like to remind you that fear does not come from God. I need, I need, I need, I need every, every, every soul to understand that, that fear does not come Cowardice does not come uh, from God. In fact, in fact, fear and cowardice is contrary to God and the spirit of God. And it is impossible to have a spirit of fear. It is impossible to have a cowardly spirit and be a, 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 a person walking in faith at the same time. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now to be clear, to be clear, in the interest of being being misunderstood. No, don't, don't, don't let me be misunderstood. Paul is not suggesting that, that we are to somehow live and exist in complete absence of fear. 
No, no, no. Listen, listen. You're going to get stirred sometimes. Say amen if you can. There's some stuff, there's some stuff about life that's going to stir you a little bit. It's going gonna, it's gonna to bother you a little bit. And so, and so Paul is not really saying here that we are to exist and live in the absence of fear as much as he is saying that we are to live in the face of fear. Are you understanding what I'm saying? He is saying that God has given us a gift. God has deposited in each and every child of God a, a, a attitude and a presence that casts out fear when you and I draw on it. It is to help us understand that we we are we we don't have to be dominated and controlled by fear because God has not given us a spirit of cowardice and a spirit of fear. God gives you a spirit of confidence. Watch this now again to accomplish His plan and His purpose. Listen now, I want you to understand that that if there's one thing that every child of God needs to keep their their, their handle on, keep their mind fixed on, is God's purpose for them. What we, oh my God, what we cannot do is become so fixated on survival. Ooh, I know, it don't make sense, but sometimes being a Christian don't make sense. You cannot become so fixated on survival and personal preservation that you lose sight of God's plan and God's ultimate purpose for your life. And that is to minister to and to serve God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? But then Paul says what, what, what God does give us is an attitude of power. Power that gives you the capacity to face your fears. He knows God doesn't just give you an assignment. He gives you the energy to do it. He says he gives power, the capacity to face our fears and use what God has given us in the face of danger, in the face of uncertainty. But, but the preaching point is that it's the kind of power that doesn't start with ourselves. It's the kind of power that is fueled by who God is and the power that God is demonstrating in, in nature, in all of creation. We, we have to remember that even though there, yes, is a global pandemic and it is to be taken seriously, the pandemic is not in control. The pandemic is not in power. Even Corona, COVID-19, rather, got an answer to God. Y'all ain't talking back to me. There is nothing in all of creation that is not subject to the power of God. And Paul is reminding Timothy that it is that same power that is at work in us. It is that same power that fuels our ability to live on purpose and in purpose for the glory of God. This is, I'm, if I have to say it a hundred times, if there's one thing you need to understand is that you are still on assignment. And God still has a purpose and a plan that you are to walk in each and every day of your life. Paul says that is the kind of power that's at work in you, the, the, the power to, to help us live out God's will in our lives. Paul said God gives power and he gives love. This love here refers to the capacity. Ooh, this is good. It refers to the capacity to express God's love toward others through the gift that God has given us. It, 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 is, it is a love that is exercised in serving and ministering to mankind when we embrace the love that God has given. And Paul, and Paul, and Paul says it, it is, it's this spirit of love. It's the spirit of love for mankind, the spirit of love for others, the spirit of love for your neighbor. The spirit of love for the seniors in your family. The spirit of love for those who are poor and don't have access to resources. It's, it's, it's the spirit of those who will fall victim and prey to the, the financial breakdown and, 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 and destruction that is, is, is bound to take place. It is, it, it is to, 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 to demonstrate a kind of love for them. And Paul says it is that kind of love that combats fear. And I believe Paul challenged Timothy to embrace the spirit of love toward others. Because when you have a your neighbor first attitude, your focus on your own fears and your own anxiety becomes blurred in the process. Come on, somebody. You want to you, you take, you want to take, you want to minimize your anxiety? You want to take your stress level down, son, start ministering to somebody else. 
Start serving somebody else. Pray. Are you understanding? Are you understanding what I'm saying? If you want to alleviate your anxiety and calm your fears, find somebody to minister to. Find somebody who needs Jesus and go to work. Be Jesus' hands. Be Jesus' feet. Be Jesus' mouth. Be Jesus' ears. Find somebody who needs Jesus and expand the borders of the kingdom of God. And I promise you, when you, when you get busy expanding the borders of the kingdom of God and being Jesus' feet and being Jesus' hands, you find a way to lose focus of your own anxiety and your own fears. And so he says, he says, he gives us a spirit of the power, a spirit of love. And finally, Paul says to young Timothy, God has given you the spirit of a sound mind or discipline. The better term here is that, that God gives you a, a self-disciplined mind. This describes an attitude that is, is ruled from the intellect and not simply from emotion. Listen, I don't know who I'm talking to in here, but ain't nothing worse than trying to deal with somebody that's all emotion and no intellect. I'm so tempted, amen, this is not gonna turn into a political, a political uh, sermon yet. Uh, but 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 a a a, a self-disciplined mind is a mind that is ruled by intellect as well as emotion. But emotion does not overrun and overrule the intellect. The self-controlled person is is clear-headed. The self-controlled mind is free from from the fluctuations in in thinking and ideas and feelings. There are there there are no highs and. And lows. It's not. It's not. You wake up in the morning and it's mountain top. Then by the time you get to lunch, it's valley low. And by the time you go to bed, it's mountain top again. It, 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 it characterizes and illustrates and describes a a level headed thinker. The self controlled person makes decisions that are thoughtful and wise. The self controlled person does not live for the moment but takes all things into account and all things into consideration before making a decision, uh, before opening their mouth. It, it, it remains uh, unrestricted by distraction when everything else is coming loose. And, and the preaching point here is that at the core of fear, watch this now, at the core of fear lies a lack of self-discipline. That's, that's the underlying point that Paul just made here. If you are if you are living a fearful, cowardly life, it, it is what you what, what what Paul is suggesting here is that that it is a life that has lost control on some level. Because because a, a level-headed person is a person who has who has a, a particular grip and control and grasp of their emotions and their feelings. And so again, the preaching point here is that the, at the core of fear lies a lack of self-discipline on some level. On some level, you've lost your grip on what God expects you to hold on to. And that's why it's such a problem for the Christian. When we, when we begin to fear and we allow anxiety to take over, we lose, we lose what God is challenging us to hold on to. And so the question becomes, how do I, how do I get my fear under control when I lose, lose control. I mean, it's easy to talk about we're supposed to, but how you do it? First of all, I want to suggest to you that in order to break free from fear, you must first face the fact that you have fears. And then make the decision you're going to break free. Put another way, you've got to you, 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 you've got to to act in such a way. You gotta, you gotta make up your mind that you are tired of behaving this way, and make up your mind that you're gonna do something about it. Now I know that sounds that sounds obvious to some, but the reality is most of us never really effectively deal with our fear and anxiety because we're in denial about our fear and our anxiety. We won't be honest with ourselves. We won't. It's, it's all right to say this corona thing is kind of freaking me out a little bit. You'll never get to a place where it doesn't freak you out until you acknowledge that it's freaking you out. Come on, I'm trying to be. Uh, so, so the first thing you have to do is acknowledge the fact that it's freaking you out. 
I'm not sure what's going to happen on my job. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Be honest about it. I'm not sure what's going to happen with my family. And it's in the process of dealing with that anxiety that God infuses you with the power. Come on, somebody. in the love to manage the anxiety. How do you deal with it? First, make up your mind that you're going to face it. And then make up your mind you're going to break free. Somebody here got to say, listen, not today. I refuse to go another day. Then, secondly, fear is, is eradicated. Now, I'm, I'm trying to hurry. I'm cutting through all of this. Fear is eradicated by increasing your faith level. Because the more your faith rises in Jesus, the less room you have for fear. In other words, you have to stop feeding your fear and start feeding your faith. And the way you do that, the way you, you feed your faith is by taking in the word of God. I wish I had something mystical and twistical and deep and profound for you, but that's all I got for you. You want, you, you, want to, you, want, you want to minimize your faith? You want to work out the faith, the, 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 the fear that's in your spirit? You've got to feed your faith with the word of God. Paul said it as plain as day, Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes and continues to come by hearing. And that hearing, the hearing you need to be listening to, the hearing you need to be hearing is the word, is the word of God. So as you feed your faith and starve your fears, your struggle with fear becomes easier. I told, I told, I told them uh, earlier that, uh, that I'm talking to myself this morning. Uh, talking about how you have to be careful about how you feed your fear and your faith. After, after about midweek Wednesday, last week, I decided, Brother Walton, and I figured out that I gotta stop listening to this, watching so much news. It, it took me a minute, Brother, Brother Allen, but after my third trip to the grocery store, y'all ain't, don't laugh at me. After my third trip to the grocery store, after we already got a stockpile, the pattern dawned on me. After a few hours of watching the news, after a few hours of, of scrolling Facebook, I was putting on my shoes, getting my keys in, getting in the car and going to the grocery store. Now what am I saying? I ain't saying don't go to the grocery store. Now if you need to go get some stuff, go get some stuff. But the point is, I began to recognize that I was feed through, through exposing myself to so much, I was really feeding my fear. It wasn't doing enough to feed my faith. And all I'm simply trying to help us understand is that if you are not careful, you'll lose your mind. Because we spend so much time feeding fear that we lose faith. Now what am I saying? Am I saying don't be informed? No, you better be informed. And watch this, you better follow the law. Now, now let me tell you this flat-footed. We gonna follow the law here. All right? Uh, but we are also gonna operate in faith. And you gotta operate in faith. Say amen if you can. Remember, and I'm done. God does not give us a spirit of fear. If you are experiencing fear and anxiety, that means there is another spirit. There is another spirit that is in that is at work in you. Because God does not give us a spirit of fear. He gives us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a sound, a sound mind. Again, be wise, use wisdom, be diligent. But also keep your faith. Amen? amen. And amen. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you so much.
for your grace and your mercy. Father, you're better to us than we 